Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. I'm your host, Thomas. Little known secret, I've not washed this hoodie since the first episode. So what did I make today, you might ask? Hold on, let me just fix the exposure. It's a bit too bright from behind. That should fix it. That's a little better. Let's 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 go a bit more just because it's still very bright on top of that. Mm. I'm not wearing my glasses. Explains why I can't see the screen. There we go. Vision 2020. As you can see, I have automated my curtains because there isn't a single thing in my life that I won't try to automate. So let's start at the beginning of this project, which started of course with this sticky note, that's the wrong sticky note. Starting with this sticky note, illustrating these blinds perfectly. For the longest time you have seen that I did not have blinds on these windows, I simply had some sort of a cover on them because this project was going to happen eventually, I was just being lazy. I wanna start off by saying I have entered this project with way too much faith in my design and maker skills. See, when I was thinking of making smart curtains, I was like, this is gonna be super easy. I literally just drew this and I thought this, this is basically all I need. This is basically two stepper motors per curtain. This would have been 60 pounds worth of stepper motors. And I have experience with stepper motors from the previous blinds automations I've did and they were loud. Like very loud. It was probably my fault, but still they were loud. So after realizing that, I made this design. You can't quite see it, but I'll, I'll put it up on screen. But basically it has the main features that I have now. It has the rod on top with the fishing line going down to the curtain and the motor on top and some, some holders for the metal rod. And it's basically what I ended up making. So you might ask yourself, but hey, why complicate it and make the curtain go up instead of down like all the other curtains we see in homes. Well, that's because I'm built different. Well, let me explain. See, I prefer to have privacy and loads of sunlight. So if I want privacy, I have to close the curtains all the way down, letting no sunlight in. And if I want sunlight, I'm giving up on privacy. So if I have the curtains going up from the bottom up, I can put them up like 30% of the way there, I get all of this privacy here and letting in all of the sunlight. I have plants to keep alive. Do you know how much sunlight I need? As much as I can get. See that guy? He's barely holding on. He has not had enough sunlight. He needs more sunlight. So that's my explanation for why the curtains go up instead of down. Does this make implementation a lot harder? Uh, probably not. See, in the research stages of this project, I looked into videos like Dr. Z, who made his own smart curtains, but his was a motor, a broomstick, and a curtain and it, the whole thing ended up like telescoping and just having issues. I'm not saying my curtains don't have issues, they have issues, but yeah, I, I didn't like his design. So back to my plan, I modeled everything in Shaper 3D, made sure everything kind of fits together properly the way I wanted it to. And then I went out shopping to a store called q and B. I'm not saying the brand name for a reason unless they want to sponsor me, which would be very greatly appreciated. There I picked up the iron rods and one long iron piece that I will need for holding the curtains and then I brought everything home and then I realized I didn't have enough pieces so I had to go back there the next day and get more. You know the saying measure twice cut once? Yeah I just eyeballed it and I am now out of tea which means I have nothing to do with my hands. Woohoo look at him go. So then I printed stuff out, I did a test version, and after that fantastic successful test that worked perfectly, maybe there was a few mishaps but I knew I could fix them moving on, so I went digging into some code. This is me typing. And I'm glad I did because I thought I wasn't going to need end stop switches. Guess what I needed? 
unneeded end stop switches. See, there is a library in ESP Home called Time Based Covers, which basically says, hey, if it takes this long for the curtains to go all the way down, just like, just put that into seconds, map it to like a scale of one to 100 in percentages, and you can just say like, hey, go 40% and it's like, right, that's like 2.5, 10 seconds, and it goes down that much. Except you do still need end stop switches, because without it, it has no idea where it is. So I ordered end stop switches. I have remodeled stuff so that I can use those end stop switches. See, and the code really wants you to use end stop switches at the top and at the bottom of the covers. But you see, I can, I, I can do it at the top. That's no problem. But at the bottom, it's slightly more difficult. And I would have to do like actual design work to figure that stuff out. So I just went, I'm not touching that. So there are no end stop switches at the bottom. It just times out. It goes down for 30 seconds and then it stops. And then it goes back up until it hits the end stop. Th those pins are mapped. They are mapped in the, in the code. They're just mapped to nothing, which causes some problems. You see, as always, I wanted to use the D1 Mini, except the D1 Mini only has nine pins. So I can't use that because I need 11. I also have an ESP3266. However, once again, it only has nine undressable pins. So I had to go shopping for a microcontroller and I found one. I settled for the ESP32 DevKit V1. They have DevKit V4 out, but I could only find DevKit V1. So that's the one I bought and it had the right amount of pens and then some. Whilst I was waiting for everything to arrive, I had to learn how to sew. I had some blackout curtains left over from a few years ago, which I kind of sacrificed for this project. I basically just had to cut one of them directly in half and chop off the bottom and with the other one just chop off the bottom and when i was cutting them in half i found they like to fray like a mud so i had to make a seam on every side that i cut which was quite enjoyable you just kind of get in the zone of stitching so after stitching all of the seams i've also had to stitch this kind of pocket thing where i can put the metal rod in so that the fishing line can hold on to and you know what, my stitching's not perfect, but considering this was only my second time ever stitching, I'm not just... Good job, me. So, a few days later, everything has arrived. I have redesigned bits, I have printed bits, I had everything ready to go, laid out right here. And it was beautiful. I am ready to take on this project and finish it in one day. Let me let you in on a little secret. It didn't just take one day. So the installation day has come upon us. I am ready to install all of the parts. I put them up to the wall. I, I put little dots where I need to pre-drill holes. Now I don't have a drill, so I had to use a Dremel to pre-drill the holes. It's basically the same thing, just a different way of holding it. Don't at me. So I pre-drilled the holes. I mounted all of the things. I've got everything set up. I've got the fishing line fished. I've got the curtain attached and I'm doing my little test for the first time with the curtain. And it starts going up. And it's going really well. And then it all falls apart. No, not literally. What happened was um, I kind of guesstimated the space between gears and uh, they, they, they were kind of just like touching each other for, for the most part, but when but the more weight you put on it, it just kind of ended up slipping and, and the whole thing just ended up unspooling and falling down. So on the day of installation, I had to completely redesign gears. So then I went back into the app and I redesigned them and they were better. I say better because they weren't, they weren't good. They, they, again, they, they were they, they, they were closer and there was more touching area, but not enough touching area to like stop it slipping. So then I increased the size of one of them by 10%. And that worked. That that solved my problem. Like the teeth were like properly in there now. They were they, they had a, they had a lot of touching area and it works. And that's what I have installed now. It it still works great. So did some more testing it worked perfectly so 
I had to print out more gears for the other two blinds. Whilst I was waiting for those to print, I went to do the electronics. And I'm not going to get too deep into the electronics here just because it's a fairly boring subject. But a uh, microcontroller, two moto drivers, love. If you need more information, there is a blog post linked below with a lot more details, diagrams and the files you can download to make this. I did find one problem with the electronics that I will... I'm simply going to show you a clip of when I, when I encountered it because I think my emotions speak for themselves. This took me so long to do. I've, I've managed to get everything properly sorted and connected. I'm, I'm still dealing with a problem, which is why I'm not touching it right now. I'm still dealing with a problem that I don't understand. And I've had this problem, I can remember struggling with this problem when I was working on the first curtains I've made. The problem is, end stop switches will activate just by running your hand too close to them. Like if I, you see that? You see that? I, I, I'm not even touching it. I'm coming close to it and it's like, whoa, no, 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 you're pressing all of the buttons. Right? Look, I'm not touching it. One finger. I'm not, ta I'm not touching it. See? I'm not, I'm not touching it. It's just like you're pressing all of the buttons. And I don't understand it. The only way I found it works is if I just don't touch it. And hopefully it will be fine. I don't know if it's like magnetic fields. I don't know if it's like me being just too high voltage. I don't know, but I come close. And it's just like, no, 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 no. I don't care. I've settled for not touching it. That is an ongoing problem and I have no idea how to fix it. It seems to just be like voodoo magic, which is why the uh, the whole circuit board is hanging off sideways like that. Not because I want it to hang off sideways like that, but simply because in any other position, it has the problem and it won't let me use my curtains. So I settled for good enough. So after finishing the electronics, I put up the other two curtains and that went relatively smoothly relatively smoothly being sandpaper. Ooh, I've got an avocado seed on my desk. I'm gonna put it up there and we can watch it grow into a big bushy plant together. If it doesn't, you'll never see it again. So that just left me with making some very long wires. And it was also at this stage when I was soldering wires to the motors and connecting the end stop switches where I decided to accidentally turn my extension cord into a soldering iron holder. The less said about that, the better. The way you calibrate it is you really just, starting from the top, you, you tell it to go down and you use a stopwatch to check how long it takes and then you input that into the code. Now I'm going to very quickly show you how I control these blinds. I'm in my home assistant dashboard here and I've got a little test scene set up with two different integrations for these curtains because I haven't quite decided which one I like more yet. I'm kind of leaning more towards this one. Now this gets a little bit confusing because I have my blinds set up to go from the bottom up. Most integrations and cards are not used to them being that way around. So I kind of have to use them upside down. I've tried flipping them in a lot of different ways. I ended up leaving a feature request on a couple GitHubs to see if I can just get them to implement a quick because that would make my life easier. But I'm leaning more towards this one because it has these buttons on the side as well as being able to drag these up and down. So if I want all my curtains to go down, I actually have to hit upwards arrow and I can bring them all down. And this will take a couple seconds. I'm not actually gonna bring them all the way down. I'm just gonna bring them to like there and then I can stop them. And then if I want them to go up, I can obviously hit the, uh, the down arrow, which brings them up. And again, I'm going to stop them there. And then here I can also decide in percentages how far I want. So let's for example say I've got too much sunlight coming in from my right hand side and I can't see my screen. I can simply drag this to like 50-40% and it won't get rid of all of the light but it'll bring up the curtain just enough for me to be able to clearly see my monitor. 
and let's say I've got a, a nice view of a sunset somewhere on the left, I can just completely lower these curtains and I can have a, a really nice view. It's currently raining, but I like the rain. And now I've got them all the way down. I have so much light in here, it's very nice. And then later on, let's say I'm working on my next month's project and I want it to be super secret and I don't want anyone to know about it. I can simply raise up all my curtains and they'll go all the way up until they hit the end stop. And there we go. Now they're all the way up. And don't worry, I'll put all of the links and the code in the blog post to just have a read for it. So without any further ado, here are some shots of it in action. So that will be it for this video, all the details and bits and bobs are in the description below. I'm off to make more tea. So without any further ado, here are some glory shots. Honey, does glory shots sound too much like... Um... I'm drowning in tea. <laughs> I knew those things would come. You okay? <laughs> yeah. So, without any further ado, here are some shots of it in action. <laughs> I imagine dubstep music playing in the uh, in the video and the, the curtains going up and down and whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm still yet to record that bit, but uh... I have a very vivid imagination.